Well, good afternoon. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome, Slay family. We have a wonderful guest today. This is a true women's empowerment conversation today. So look out, folks. You're going to love this. Today, our special guest is Rebecca Snyder. She is the executive director of Executive Alliance, which is an organization that is truly changing the conversation about women in the workplace. And I'm really excited for you to learn about this organization and how uh, Rebecca is the warrior taking this path and message out to everybody. So without further ado, Rebecca, welcome, first of all. Thank you for being here. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, Executive Alliance and what you are doing with this great organization, please? Sure. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me. I just joined the Slay family, and it is a fantastic resource. So thank you so much, Leanne, for creating that group. Um, and as you mentioned, I'm the executive director of Executive Alliance, which is a lot of executives. Um, and I guess that kind of underscores uh, we're a membership organization for senior level executive women. So just to underscore that executive a little bit more. And our focus is really to change the conversation about women in the workplace. And there's a lot of, we specialize in a couple specific ways um, to, to change that conversation. Really, when you're when you're trying to make change in the world, you want to do it from the highest levels of power. And so one of the ways we um, try and change that conversation is to get women on corporate board seats. Um, we also focus on executive leadership positions. And we also recognize that you don't um, that often you need to measure what you the results. So we have an annual report, our census report measures um, women in board leadership. And then we also look to give back. And so we run an effective impact mentoring program, which is a year long transformational program. We focus on Maryland, but you know, our mission is national and because the work is, is important and it's big. So we're super excited to, uh, to be here and talking to you. Well, we're really, really excited to have you here. I mean, this is truly something that is very dynamic and very important. And to have an actual organization leading the charge is amazing. So would you share with us how this started? What was the inspiration? Where did Executive Alliance come from? How did this happen? Sure. Well, you know, you never start an organization without a problem to be solved. And the problem, unfortunately, has been a longstanding one. Yeah. Women have not been able to sort of take our power in the workplace. And so back in the early 90s, just a, a, a powerhouse cohort of women looked at ways that they could highlight women's leadership in the state. So we've always been... Um, sort of grounded in the greater Baltimore area, but covering the entire state of Maryland. And uh, these women banded together and, and it, from the start, it was always social with advocacy. So uh, you, we wanna make connections between women because we need to have each other's backs. And yes. you find that um, when women are, are scaling the workplace and, and you need, a support network of peers to be able to talk about situations that you're encountering, strategize on ways to move the project forward. And Executive Alliance has really done that in many respects. So now we're about a hundred women strong. We're always looking for more people to join the cause or get involved in, in a variety of ways. And we can get that to that when we talk a little bit more about action. Um, but we're a longstanding organization. Some people in the area may have known us as Network 2000. We underwent a branding uh, change in 2016 and have been known as Executive Alliance ever since. Fantastic. So um, let's talk about the impact you're having because the organization is really powerful and extraordinarily effective. So I was wondering if today you could share some success stories, whether it is you know, an individual story or a larger scale corporate kind of view of everything, but what are some of the things that you're able to do with this great organization? Sure. Well, you know, I think everything starts from the personal and then it branches out from there. Mm -hmm. So we have kind of our meta projects. I mentioned earlier, our annual census report, which tracks board membership and corporate leadership roles for publicly traded companies in Maryland. So we've done that since 2007. We have a wide depth of research 
and tracking on on this issue and uh, some legislation has come out of that. Um, and so we hey, advocate- so on, You went super fast and that's a big deal that you just said. <laughs> And I know well, we just glide on over that. Like, oh, we just do this. But, you know, can you take a second and explain to people like, what exactly the census is, how that works, what you're looking at, what you're seeing, because people who haven't been exposed to you um, won't really understand how deep you're going and the value of that, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. You know, I, I always like, oh, yeah, we do that. It's it's no big. We just analyze reams and reams of publicly available corporate data. Um, but this, if it shows up, this is our, our honor roll publication. I'll put it in the uh, Facebook group, the link to it so people can read it their, at their leisure. Um, but essentially, we look at Maryland's publicly traded companies. Mm -hmm. And there's think about 78 of them right now. And unfortunately, the numbers are going down a little bit. Um, and we look at how many of those companies have uh, women board directors and women in roles of executive leadership. So one of our um, sort of the hallmarks of that report is our 2020 honor roll list which calls out companies that have at least 20% of their executive positions held by women and at least 20% of their board seats held by women. So, you know, in, in some, uh, some companies, that is really, that's something they're consciously doing um, to bring women forward, like McCormick and Company is, was mm -hmm. on our 2020 list. And that's part of their gender diversity initiative uh, they have a benchmark that they want to meet that half of their executive leadership women uh, roles will be held by women wow. by a certain time. So it really is um, heading in a way where we're allowed to, um, where people are are um, moving this forward. And, and it tends to be more of, for some companies, it really is part of their corporate infrastructure. For others, you know, if you're a very small company and there's five people on the leadership team and one of them is then the founder is a woman and we have that in a lot of the biotechs mm -hmm. you're hitting that 20 percent um pretty easily so it's it's a full gamut um we also compare to the s p 500 and so one of the things that i think is so interesting i think it it plays into this personal which we'll get into next is that the s p um 500 has uh let's see let me just only 5% of S&P 500 boards have just one uh, woman director. Really? 34% of Maryland's companies have one woman director. And you might think, well, that's great. At least, you know, they have one. But when we talk about one versus a cohort, one tends to be a token. There's research that shows that if you have at least three of any sort of minority, women, racial diversity, um, whatever the case might be, that creates systemic change. So it's not enough to have just one person sitting at the table. You need a group. And so that's where I think the power of Executive Alliance really comes in because you have those social connections, because you have that support team, every woman, in our organization is always looking not only for ways that they can advocate to have more women at the highest levels of power, we're mentoring to make sure that more women are coming, are putting a hand out to pull more women in, and we're educating so people can build their skills and, and really be prepared for their next step. So there's a ton of fascinating information for, for the data geeks it's in here and just for the great <laughs> stories it's in here as well. So I'll link to that on the Facebook page. Yes, actually we'll throw the link up on, on YouTube too so that people watching it on YouTube will be able to do that as well. And I, I'm really glad you took the time to elaborate. I didn't wanna take you off the trail of sharing success stories, but what you're doing is really amazing the way you are gathering and analyzing this data and making a shift. So. I didn't want you to go ripping past something that incredible that you're doing. Well, thank, thank you for slowing me down on that. And it's I think it all, awesome. I mean, it is. Well, when you look at that wide arc, that umbrella kind of data, um, it is, it's pretty amazing. But you have to remember that all of that is made up of individual women. So like, for instance, um, every year, we do something called the Green Bag Initiative, which um, for those of you who, who know, the governor um, uh, 
puts together his, I guess, his slate of nominees to various boards and commissions mm -hmm. that are gubernatorially appointed. And that's called the green bag, uh, green bag appointments. They usually happen in, in February. I have no idea where the name green bag comes from. Would love I to wasn't going to ask. Okay. <laughs> it's a little random, but whatever. So we do a green bag initiative where we um, educate our members on what you need to do to be considered for those appointments and also publicizing the 500 at least boards and commissions that normally have vacancies because we want women to be part of that conversation. So we work on a really specific level to say, oh, okay, we have this member over here who has expertise in healthcare and this and that. What commissions would she fit and really try and make those connections. And so for us, it's not just about the data. You need the data because that shows on a macro level if you're getting in the right, if you're heading in the right direction. Sure. But it really is about people. And so um, Green Bag Initiative is just one of those tiny little pieces. Um, our effective impact mentoring program, which I'm super jazzed about because we just started our year long cohort at the end of August, mm -hmm. we have, right now we have nine women, sort of mid-career level women who are working together over the course of a year, in-person sessions and direct one-on-one -on -one mentoring with Executive Alliance members in a focused transformational mentoring program. And so many, several of our members have gone through that program and then in a couple of years later have become members. And so what we're always trying to do is kind of feed that pipeline and working to be each woman's next professional step. We all can grow and we all need to you know, just do different things. So um, it, it's been very exciting to see that kind of personal growth um, in the mentoring program, especially, and in a lot of our professional development programs, because we cut across sectors and industries and you're meeting, you're, you're at the same level with, with women. Yes. Um, we're not, we're focused on you. We're not focused on like, how can you do your current job, you know, better or differently? It's more like, what do you want to be the agent of in your life, which I think is an amazingly empowering thing. Yeah, that is really amazing. And I know, um, you know, we're going to talk about people and how if they want to become a member, they can. But that mentoring program, does someone have to be a member to get into the mentoring program? What's the, how's that work? Because there may be somebody listening go, oh, I want to be part of that. <laughs> well, the application is open. So, um, it, and I'll, again, I'll link to it uh, a little bit later on, but our website is executivealliance.org if, if people just can't wait and need to see it right now. Um, but you don't have to be a member. In fact, our membership is really senior level women. So this is sort of um, uh, women who wouldn't probably have that, you know, 20, level, 20 years of experience in an industry kind of experience, um, but are, are rising stars. So the companies and organizations don't have to be members either. Um, we, we take it from everywhere. And many of our professional development programs are open to, to others besides our membership. Great. So with all the things that you are doing, and there's a lot that you are covering, and you're hitting all these different uh, ways across the board, what is the, what is the vision long term? Uh, where does Executive Alliance want to go? What is their goal in terms of impact or growth or what, you know, what's the long-term plan? Because it sounds like you're just skyrocketing through making all these changes right now. Well, you know, I think it's it's work. You always think about, okay, I want to be out. I want to work myself out of a job proverbially. Like <laughs> women need to take their power. Mm. And I think right now we have this unique situation and opportunity where COVID has kind of frayed all of the structures of the world. And we're seeing with, with women in the workplace, especially COVID has been a disaster for women. You know, when you look at who was burdened more with doing the homeschooling, who caring for the elderly, all the, all the roles that women seem to always have taken on were exacerbated by the pandemic. And so I think we have this opportunity to really shape 
how we want our new normal to look like, what, what we want our new normal to look like. It wasn't always great previously. We're not trying to get back to the way things were. We're trying to figure out, okay, how do we want to move in the world going forward? And so I think our long-term vision is always to act as that catalyst, to be asking those questions, you know, how can we make a more just and equitable world for women? Yeah. Um, and it's been a, like, it's a long train work, you know, like it, it's not ending anytime soon. We're going to celebrate our 30th anniversary next year. So amazing. Yeah. And I was reading to, to prep for this. I was reading the history of the organization on, on the website and it was named Network 2000 because the women that, that started it had um, ambitious ideas that with, you know, with gumption and hard work in the early 2000s, in, you know, the year 2000, we would get there. And honestly, we all have to look at, at more than incremental change because the pace of, of change that we're seeing, it would take another 80 years to get to gender parity. And yeah. we're not even talking racial parity. We're not even talking, you know, women from disadvantaged backgrounds. We're just talking, you know, it, it's um, the work it's, it's going to be long term. And so I think we have to look at ways we can celebrate success along the way, ways we can build community, ways we can individually and as an organization make things right for more women. Yeah, it's interesting what you said because, well, everything you said was interesting, first of all, <laughs> but it is kind of like the corporate world, it was so completely altered by this pandemic. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know so many women that are you know, business women or entrepreneurs. And just like you said, you know, okay, my kids are in the other room trying to do homework. I'm trying to jump on Zoom and, you know, do a right. deal at the same time. I mean, it was crazy doing that, but it does give us the opportunity to reinvent. And I love that point that you made because when something tumbles down and you have to rebuild, you can look at how you want to build it and build it differently. Right. And I feel like there's more urgency now as well. Like, um, so many of our members are not satisfied with the pace of change that we had yes. prior to the pandemic. And when you have an event like a global pandemic, which I hope we'll never have to experience again, um, <laughs> it, it just creates this sense of, okay, what are we waiting for? Like, the, our time is precious. We need change now. And I think you're seeing it in a, in a lot of different scenarios. And so we're looking to harness that energy and really make change. Um, in the Maryland legislature in 2019, in the before times, Executive Alliance brought a bill forward about gender, um, gender equity in the boardroom. Uh, and it asks, it's, it created a reporting requirement for nonprofit and private businesses to share how many women were on their boards of directors. And mm -hmm. so, we wanted to team that data it just, you know, the, the first report was released early in January. And, you know, sometimes these things take a while to get the, the data in a way that you can understand and see what's really happening. Our goal, it was to team that with the publicly available company information to show a fuller picture of what's happening in the state, because, you know, the publicly traded companies are only but one slice of, of the pie. Yes. And now there's so many more entrepreneurs out there. There's so many more small businesses. Many of them don't have boards. They should, but they uh, they don't. And so we're trying to just get our hands around like what's happening in all the different sectors as well. Fantastic. So yeah. this is really it's exciting work. It's inspiring work and it's really critical work. And I know some of the people viewing this will go, well, how do I get involved now? There are probably multiple ways. I'm sure you are seeking executives and I wanna ask you about that in a second, but also what if someone is maybe not that high up as an executive, but they don't need a mentoring program. They're kind of somewhere in that little middle ground. So mm -hmm. let, let's break those things down on how people can become involved. I guess we'll start with the uh, executive. So if you're seeking people who would love to do this and participate in the program, do they need to be on a corporate board? Could they be an entrepreneur? Can they be a real estate agent? What, what kind of experience is it that you're looking for 
for people who can be part of the alliance? Sure. So um, we're really looking for senior level women. So whatever that means in your industry, we do have a lot of solopreneurs. We have um, people who own their own businesses, people who are part of, of larger organizations. So we really do try and have a wide breadth of industries represented because we want that cross section. We mm. want different people involved. Um, and on our website in the in the join us now uh, section, it'll give you the experience levels. It's not hard and fast. It's sort of a general rule. Um, so that would be kind of senior level if you and and I think also for people who are interested in joining. Yes, we want you to join, but we definitely want you to be active. The work of Executive Alliance, you know, I sit here and be like, oh, I'm the executive director, right? But I don't do nearly the amount of work for the organization that our committees do. We have nine committees that are wow. all active, all meet monthly, and we really encourage members to get involved. We have things like a Women on Boards Committee that really focuses on that sort of training and work. Um, legislative advocacy. We're standing up our first um, DEI task force to make sure that we're putting DEI in the center of everything that we do. Um, we have our mentoring committee membership and all those good things. So that's for senior level women. Um, our, we covered a lot about our mentoring program and sort of where, yeah. where that is. Um, we also run some professional development programs. So this earlier this year we did, and this is one of the blessings of the pandemic, is that we're all a little bit more used to Zoom. We're more used to we webinars. Are, aren't we? We're used to this Facebook <laughs> Live now. Um, whereas, you know, maybe in the before times that wouldn't have been the comfort level for many people. So yeah. we have been doing more capsule programs that are open to, for members, they're free, for uh, non-members, there's a nominal fee. Mm -hmm. But it's a way to get people engaged because this kind of activism, yes, it's helpful to be part of an organization, but there's a lot personally that everyone can do. You know, if you're your own sort of, if you're the captain of your ship, how do you want to steer that ship? And what can we as an organization do to help support that journey? And ultimately, yes, we feel like everyone should be aligned with Executive Alliance, but there's lots of ways to get involved. Great, wonderful. And you have an event coming up, I believe. You have events that people can come and be exposed to the organization and learn through. Would you mind sharing that, please? Sure. So uh, traditionally, we've done Women of Excellence, which has been a huge, showy, thousand-person event at Martin's West um, with a nationally recognized speaker. The idea of that in COVID makes everybody's skin crawl. We are not going to get a thousand people under one roof anytime soon. So we are planning a, a scaled down more appropriate COVID appropriate women of excellence in January. Uh, we've we've set the date. It's probably going to be January 20th. And we're looking at the concept of women as disruptors and innovators. And we'll have a, a series of speakers, which I think will be fantastic. Um, in June, we have our honor roll event, which again, teams with the launch of our annual census report. Um, so that'll be June 15th this year. And scattered throughout, we have our next member meeting is October 16th in person at uh, Devaney and Associates in Owings Mills in an outdoor setting. And we are all so excited about that um, <laughs> just because we haven't gotten a chance to kind of interact. And we do small group events and coffees and things like that and webinars. So all of our events are listed on our website. And um, I would encourage people to go and check out and see what's open to non-members and to members. Excellent. So they can also um, you know, reach out to you as well as go to the website, I believe. Is that correct? Oh, for sure. Yes, I am here. <laughs> and then and I have one more question for you, um, because yeah. you've been great sharing all this information and time, and I really appreciate it. Uh, we do have a lot of people that are in the Maryland area. Obviously, I'm in Maryland. You're in Maryland. We get a lot of that. But we have a lot of people that are around the country, even some people in Europe, Australia, etc. But just to kind of step back, if I was, let's say, watching this and I lived out somewhere in the Midwest or mm -hmm. somewhere in the South. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. Is there anything like this where I live? Is there anything national? Is there a way for women to connect and find out if there's an organization like this where they're located or get some support if they want to be a go-getter and start one? What is there outside of right here in Maryland? 
Sure. There's and because this work is national, I mean, there's there's a lot of work to be done across the country. Yes. Um, we belong to a national network called ION that is a consortium of women's organizations such as ours. And I just wanted to step back for a moment and say, even though you know we're focused, our mission is all about women, we are inclusive. If you don't identify as a woman, come on in because we we do put women's empowerment at the center. However, we've had male members uh, over time and we do, we're big tent kind of people. So all that aside, um, if you're if you're looking for ways to get involved on a national level, it kind of also depends what you're looking for. If you're looking specifically for, you know, board leadership opportunities, there are some specific organizations that are sort of board matching, board placement. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in um, uh, specific skills around um, getting onto a corporate board, which is a whole other kettle of fish than the nonprofit or maybe governmental um, commission boards. The um, Director of Diversity Institute in North Carolina is very helpful and has a fair number of virtual programs. So if you're interested in, in an organization like Executive Alliance and are wishing you lived in Maryland, call me and or contact me in some way and I'll, I'll help direct you to an organization that can help you. Outstanding. So we'll put maybe a couple of those links below this interview. So that'll be helpful. If you are watching this in the Slay Facebook group, then Rebecca is part of the group. So you can send her yes. a message, which makes it nice and easy. If you are watching this on YouTube, though, we will put a link with the website and all that information in the comment section right below. So you'll be able to tap into that. So if you're watching it on YouTube, you will not be left behind. And uh, Rebecca has very nicely offered to answer any questions after this. So if you have any questions, comments, you're excited, you're inspired, whatever the case may be, please, we encourage you to leave comments below the interview on either the Facebook or the YouTube, and she will be sweet enough to check in and help us out with all of that. So uh, Rebecca, I wanna really thank you so much for being here and for the work that you are doing uh, for women. That's just absolutely outstanding, it really is. Well, thank you. This was a delight. I really appreciate the opportunity and I can't wait to continue the conversation.